Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Galetz, and I'm an industry education coordinator working with the Regina District Industry Education Council and SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Angie Friesen, who's an entrepreneur who works alongside her husband, Dale, and they own and operate Beagle Productions Limited in Saskatoon. Beagle Productions specializes in the design and development of web and mobile applications. They currently have over 400 clients, and over the last 18 years, have provided web software and design solutions to thousands of clients. I've got that information from their website. Angie serves as an excellent example of how a young entrepreneur can find success in the fast-paced technology sector and still balance the demands of being a mother of three young, very active children. Today, Angie will tell us about her career journey from her days from growing up in Rosetown to where she is today. Just a reminder before we begin, the session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in the future. We also like to request that any other students who watch this session Go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found near the top of the web page. Completion of the survey gets your name and a draw for a, a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. Again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. Once again, welcome, Angie. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Angie. And this is a picture of me in um, our building. We're in Saskatoon and we're on Broadway. So we're in a building called the Broadway Collective. And this is in the co-working space. And our office is also in this building. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So I wasn't entirely sure what to put for my job description. Um, as Kevin said, my husband and I are entrepreneurs and Beagle Productions is our primary business. But I would say in the last, you know, I don't know, maybe say 10 years, um, my job has gone from like just marketing and project management to really being involved in building a lot of businesses. We, we've partnered with a lot of different software pro projects that we've done have turned into their own business opportunities. And um, just before I was coming on this this morning, I, I was actually like counting the number of businesses that we're involved in now, and it's 13. So it's kind of crazy, um, but we'll get to that also a little bit more in the journey. But most of what I do is, is in the marketing realm of, of building a business. So the duties include whatever is needed. That is something that I think is unique to being an entrepreneur is that it's you really have to do whatever needs to get done. There's nothing that's above your pay grade or below your pay grade. Um, there's lots of things that are going to challenge you and things that you you don't know how to do it and you don't know what to do. So you're, you're constantly learning new things, growing, um, talking to mentors, people who have done similar things before um, but also there's there's times that it's like things need to be cleaned and you're it so um, so like I said when I started I was hired on here just out of university and so I started doing more project management I was working on proposals and then if we had web clients I would be like the primary um, project manager. So I kind of was the go between between our uh, developers and programmers and the client. So kind of um, taking on a project and figuring out the scope of the project, pricing it out and kind of going through the proposal stage, pitching it to them, and then hopefully they would choose us. And then once they were work, we were working together, then I'd work with them through the design stage and and building whatever it was we were building for them. So 15 years ago, that was mostly websites. And now we do mostly software projects for people. That's kind of been uh, part of the journey of Beagle Productions. My husband started it basically when the internet was just becoming a thing. So back in the day, having a website was a really big deal. And now, um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, it's something that people can even build themselves. There's lots of really amazing software tools for, for that sort of thing. So custom software is more where we moved. Um, but now I help with branding strategy. I've actually, I, we used to have um, an in-house designer and that's something over the last five years that because of 
of uh, new technology and software. It's something that I've been able to pick up and something I've always really enjoyed, but that's been like a new skill and a really fun thing for me has been getting into more graphic design. Um, social media, that's another thing that wasn't even a thing when I started this job. And now it's a big part of the job, having a presence on social media. Content creation is something else that um, might seem like really normal now, but even 10 years ago, it was it was so different how things were marketed. Now a really important thing for websites and for getting people um, to know about you is like producing your own unique content that gets people coming to either your social media or your website. So content creation for web is very different than um, probably the writing that you're doing in high school and even the writing you, you, would, you would do in university writing for web is it's almost like its own style and it's something that um, I think is really really cool and fun to learn about so copywriting uh, that's that's kind of like ties into content creation proposals is its own type of writing again and uh, like I said for from a client management perspective just translating what the client is asking for and what their needs are and actually putting that into um, a way that that programmers and developers who are very logical, practical thinkers, and often the client is more like, well, I needed to do this. And it's kind of a, a bigger picture problem that they have. And so um, taking that big need and breaking it down to like exactly how the software needs to actually uh, function to meet that need is, is something that in a pro from the project management side of my job is, is a unique skill set that um, is also lots of fun. But some people are the big thinkers and some people are the like break it down to the tiny little details. So that's so the pro project manager is somewhere in between that can speak both of those languages. Um, another part of my job is just constant problem solving. This doesn't necessarily always mean like a bad problem. It's just that there's always new challenges and new things that, that we're facing um, that just we haven't done before or we haven't experienced before. A huge part of my job is just coming up with new ideas, brainstorm, um, and just like figuring out how to do and what to do, whatever needs we're facing that day. Build relationships is another big part of this. So that's part of that could be networking and putting yourself out there to meet people, um, to, oh, I just got a message from my interview. So I hope I'm, I'm becoming one here. If I start not uh, working properly, let me know and I'll make sure I get on a better Wi-Fi. Um, so yeah, building relationships also is really important uh, just from with clients, relationships with clients. Um, and a lot of work we do now is actually with a lot of Indigenous communities, and then building relationships is even more important, depending on the different cultures that you're, you're both their side of being an entrepreneur, that um, if you're in Mark, a big company, and you were really uh, focused, you wouldn't be needing to do that too, but that's something that um, when you have your own business is something you need to do. So skills, personality, the things, top things that came to my mind were being creative, having an eye for design. Um, this was a question actually I, I was asked when I interviewed for this job, um, are you creative? And I'd never been asked that before and I'd never really thought of myself as creative, but it's something that I've really embraced and I, I understand now creativity is really not just about being able to draw or write a song or sing or perform. Um, there's so much more to being creative. So for me, it started with just having like an eye for design and like knowing what looked good to actually being able to make something look good and actually design the graphic design. Um, but just thinking outside the box, constantly being creative and problem solving. And then um, in a marketing type of job, if you're if you have kind of side interest in photography or graphic design, 
it's so helpful when you can create your like really not always have to be relying on somebody else for that skill set, but be able to bring that to the table as well. That's a huge bonus. Um, as far as like being an entrepreneur, you need to have a sense of adventure. You need to be a risk taker, willing to try new things. You need to be open all the time to new ideas, opportunities. And um, along with this is just having resiliency because when you have your own business, guaranteed there are going to be times when you need to when you fail this is probably going to happen at least for us many times and you have to be resilient and and able to just keep getting back up again and trying new things um, communication skills this is not just in speaking but also just in writing copy and like i said there's so many different platforms now um, and different writing styles so being direct and leading most likely even if you don't start managing people, you very unlikely that you will start managing people, you'll be managed and eventually in your career, you'll move to a space where you probably have people under you. So learning how to be direct and be a good leader, a good manager, um, being able to sell ideas and just collaborate and be a really good team player. All those things that were important in kindergarten are still really important in the workplace as well. And then technology skills. This is something I'm sure you you know as well as well as anybody, but um, it's always changing. So so much of the technology that I'm using now wasn't even invented or thought of when I was in university, let alone high school. I'm sure Kevin and Gordon can attest to this that technology is it's just something that you're always going to be adapting and and working with so being having an appreciation for that and enjoying new technology and trying new things is, is an important part of it as well so where i work um, this is just a picture of me in our office but i work mostly here during the day when my kids are at school but i also work from home i mean through COVID, i work from home a ton and then in the summer i work at home some days if i really need to focus i just work from home um so the nice thing about being in marketing especially now especially once you guys get through school um it's going to be so so flexible and that's a huge bonus so these are just some of the technology and software and things that i use canva is what i use for design i love canva it's so so awesome Instagram for social media for um, marketing different businesses, Zoom, obviously, the W is for Weebly, that's what we use to build websites, and it's got a really user friendly content management system, and uh, it's really easy to make your design look good mobile, it all happens automatically. Um, Trello is the blue one there with the white lines, and that is a software that I use for project managing mainly myself, but also um, different projects that I'm working on as well. But it's like I love making lists, and Trello is the ultimate list maker software. I can keep track of everything in Trello, and even more amazing if you're working on a team and you're all using Trello because it's really nice to see what everybody's working on and, and keep track. Google, obviously, Google Drive. Um, when I was young, I remember working on a project in university and like a whole essay. And then at the end of the essay, something going terribly wrong and losing it and having to start over. And that does not happen anymore. So thank you, Google, for making the cloud and making that a thing of the past. I also use a Mac computer. I love my Mac. Once you go Mac, you don't go back. Um, some of the rewards of being an entrepreneur is for sure flexibility, the ability to make your own rules. It's always fresh. It's always changing. Um, balancing work and home life. For example, today, this morning, I was at the Wonder Hub with my eight year old for her field trip. And and now I'm here and uh, it's I love to have a job that I can I can do that. I don't have to even ask. I can just plan for whatever needs to happen. Um, autonomy, that basically just means that um, I can make decisions for myself. I don't always have to, to double check and ask and fit inside a certain times that I need to be at work or um, 
that sort of thing. I have really have ownership over what I'm doing and how I do it. And it's a creative outlet. I love that in my job, I'm, I'm always like refreshed and re-energized with creativity. If I had a job that wasn't creative, I know I would still be creative in other areas of my life, but it's really um, something I didn't realize when I was younger, but something that I certainly value now is just having that creative outlet as part of my job. Challenges. Every job has challenges. Entrepreneurs, you're definitely going to have challenges. Basically, um, what I dumbed it down to is you're always on. There is no plan B and you carry all the risk. If you do not like to carry risk, if you're not a risk taker and you like your budget and you like your spreadsheets and you have a five year plan, um, it may not be for you because you just never know. And every day, week and month and year is different. And hopefully you just keep moving up. But um, I can attest that that is not always the case. And um, sometimes things don't work out how you think they're going to, especially in business. And so uh, I wrote, where does your value come from? Because this is something that I've had to go through and learn the hard way. I used to get a lot of my value of who I was from getting really good marks and being being smart and being good and <laughs> and I had an idea in my head that like the that that a would equal b that working hard and being smart and um doing the right thing would mean I was gonna be successful and have lots of money and do whatever I wanted and um what I've learned is that that doesn't always equate. Sometimes even with everything, you think you're doing everything right, your business can fail. And that does not mean that you are a failure. And that's that's a big lesson to learn, something to keep in mind as you go into, um, if you're starting your own business, something really, really important. And something that um, even if you try your best, you might have to learn the hard way somewhere along the way. So I kind of alluded to stability. It can be really, um, challenging because you're the last one to get paid. So there's always people ahead of you. There's always, um, it's, there's always things to invest in and you you kind of like keep, even if you do make extra money, you're, you're most likely putting it into growing your business. So you put again, your risk into, um, hopefully lots of baskets, but it's, uh, you're not going to have the stability that some people like. So if you if you like that, then you should be working for the government or um, <laughs> something more stable. Um, and then when you're tired, that is a challenge because you probably don't have a backup um, from, in our instance, it's like, it costs a lot of money to have depth in your company. So sometimes it takes a lot of time to get there. And there are seasons when there is no one to have your back so if you're sick, if you're tired, if you're, um, you know, need a holiday, it's sometimes you just got to suck it up and keep going. So salary and benefits. Um, I said it's wide and varied, but here's my story. So a typical marketing salary would be 45000 to 80000 but um Something really cool that I think you should look for, even if you're not the entrepreneur, but you're starting out in kind of a marketing role or project management role. If you're really good at what you do and you love what you do, it would be awesome and very smart to try to at some point get some stake in the company that you're working in. And people really appreciate and will do a lot of things to retain good employees. They're um, one of the quotes I heard recently was there's a holy war for talent. So if you are one of the, sorry, there's some tools going on in the background. I hope that's not too loud. Um, but if you're, if you're one of those that uh, your company wants to keep, they're going to be willing to do things to keep you. So keep that in mind. It might be a raise. It might be stake in the company. But um, often if you have ownership in the company, you're going to work harder and, um, 
people realize that and appreciate that. So that's just something to consider because you could then end up making way more than that. And that is what we're hoping for, <laughs> for us. So for benefits, in this case, we just get our own benefits privately. At other times in the business, we've, we've um, carried benefits for everyone. But um, at this point, that's something we just do on our own. We do not have a pension. Holidays, yes, please. We take them when we absolutely need them, but we definitely don't take as many holidays as we would if we weren't the business owners. And typical work hours. Before I had kids, I used to work for sure 50 hours a week. I loved working and I didn't have a lot else to do. Um, but now I basically work 20 to 40 hours. I for sure work 25 hours. Um, generally because I work the hours the kids are in school, give or take a little bit of dog walking time, which is another perk of the flexibility. So, but like sometimes I, you work all weekend because there's a project that needs to be done. So it really, it, it totally depends um, on what's happening at the time. So for education, lifelong learning is a necessity if you are going to be an entrepreneur or if you're going to be in marketing or most jobs. So for me, I went to the U of S, I got my bachelor's degree in marketing, and I also got my degree in biotechnology management, which in Saskatchewan, we studied biotech uh, specifically because there's so many examples here. But basically what that teaches you is how to bring a new technology to market, which essentially is what we're doing with all of these different software solutions that we're producing. So um, that was a that was a cool extra thing that I had studied and was interested in in school. So I just also kind of mentioned before, consider when I went to university, there was no Facebook, there was no social media. Um, you had to go to school to be a designer. So never stop learning, growing and trying new things. So for me, I went to university right after I graduated from Rosetown. And I did two years of arts and science. I originally thought, hey, I'm smart. And there seems like there's going to be a lot of jobs in computer science. So I should just go into that. But I did probably two classes. And I knew that I was not going to be a programmer because my brain does not work in that way. You, you need a special kind of brain to be interested to be in coding and developing. And that was not me. But um, I did like the that that world. So it's kind of cool that I ended up going in that direction, but being on the marketing and project management side of it. So after those two years, I took a year off, I traveled all over Southeast Asia and Australia. I did not know what I wanted to do. I was choosing at that time between being a teacher, being a pharmacist, or going into commerce, uh, which is the business school. And, and then what was kind of scary about that is that going into to commerce at the time, um, Edwards School of Business is what it's called now. I, I still didn't know what that meant because there's so many things you can major in there. And so I still didn't really know myself well enough at that point to know um, what to do. So by the time I was done traveling, I had decided I was gonna do commerce. So I went to business school and I finished my degree. I got hired at Beagle Productions, like I said, right after I got my degree and my, I, it's a whole other story, but <laughs> Dale Friesen, who's my husband now, he owned Beagle Productions and uh, we ended up getting married. So um, through, through that time, uh, I worked for about three years and then we had our first child and we had three kids really close together. So I didn't really work at all in that time. But I was always kind of like at home listening to what was happening. And at that point, we had like 25 employees and it was crazy. And Dale was on the road all the time. He was constantly traveling because, again, this was basically before Skype and Zoom, where people actually went to the city, paid for a plane ticket to go to a meeting, which think, thankfully that's not really a thing anymore at all to the extent it was then. Um, trade shows and that sort of thing. There was just 
always so much travel so that that could be a perk in this job if depending what you like um so i started back to work slowly the business was growing it was crazy we thought you know we're gonna have it made someone's gonna pay millions of dollars for our software and we had a lot of really close really cool opportunities around that time and it just didn't happen and so we had spent a ton of money and put everything in to software that we wholeheartedly believed in and uh and it didn't work out so that was that was a hard season that still you know it affects you for a long time um but we kept on keeping on and now you know however many years later we we have actually 13 different businesses which is crazy and very cool and so every day is very very different um and yeah like uh, my job has has really changed to be more on, on growing and and getting those businesses off the ground launching them finding the right people to work on them um, marketing them uh, it's lots of fun so a few areas of marketing in our, our company social media uh, this is if you're on instagram which i'm sure all of you are or whatever you're on you know that there's there's lots of uh companies that branding themselves on Instagram and it and you kind of have to be clever and funny but also professional and informational and you and some people are posting literally three times a day and I post once a week just to keep it going by no means is that um enough to really like make Instagram grow be a, like a driving force but it is there is no end to the amount of time that you can spend on social media. Personally, I'm sure you you know from personal perspective, but professionally, too, it's just you have to be really um, figuring out like that where the you cross the line from wasting your time to making it help you and actually get a profit is something that I think there's going to be huge demand for people to manage social media. If this is something that you're interest you like doing personally. I, I think there's going to be tons of demand for doing this, for helping companies do this smarter, faster, better, um, improve their brand on online. So that's something I think uh, is a really good entry level area to go into if you like that. And one of the ways you could do that is if is with your personal stuff. So um, start thinking about that if you if, if people can see that you're you're representing your brand with yourself well now I think that that will bode well for you if you're interested in doing that professionally for a company. So brand manager is another one, so this would be like everything from fonts and colors to. Um, like your personality as a company and making sure that you're rep represented well when you're out in the world um, graphic design. This is a constant job as well. Everything needs to look pretty. There's, you know, that's something that's changed a lot too. Things used to just be done in Word proposals, and now they're like a whole other level of design and expectation for um, things to look professional. Resumes used to be done in Word. Now you want to make sure your resume is super professional and shows your personal brand you know think about what colors represent you what fonts what um style those kind of things i think that that really matters um copywriting like i said writing for web very specific very intentional email campaigns if you're interested if you like writing and you're interested in this area this is something also that is like an up-and-coming um there's it's really interesting because there's a lot of science in this as well. Um, SEO specialist is kind of in a similar train where if you can be really good at this, there is a there are generations of people, myself included, that are far enough along in our career that we're we're like needing to learn this from the ground up. Um, if you can come in from the ground up from school and out of high school and become really smart in this and knowledgeable and become an expert, the sky's the limit. I think that there's huge opportunity um, in this. 
So this is just an interesting thing. We create as much information in two days now as we did from the dawn of man through 2003. That's insane. There's so much content being created. And so from a marketing perspective, um, opportunities are only growing. So one of the things that I really appreciate is the work-life balance. I can put my family first, but you have to be intentional. Um, it is easy as an entrepreneur to be a workaholic, to work all the time. And that's great in different seasons of your life. But when you have a family, it's not even really possible <laughs> to do that. Um, so yeah, we have the freedom to be there for what's most important, which is our family, but it is a constant daily battle and balancing act. And there's sacrifice on both sides. And that is my presentation. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Thanks, Angie. That was, uh, that was really good. Uh, Gord, do you have any questions? You covered it really well from an entrepreneurship uh, uh, position. That's a, that's a, you just gave a class. Uh, <laughs> so, um, don't really have any questions because you covered everything very thoroughly. So you've been in uh, uh, Beagle Productions for how long then uh, has it been around? I graduated in 2006, so that's when I started, but Dale started it in 1999. Wow. Yeah, so he had, like Beagle was web basically, and then um, he also started a company called Scouting Solutions then, and that was uh, a way for athletes to take, um, to try to get scholarships for college mostly, because in the, for NCAA, you could only actually meet them in person once or twice, the rules are really strict. So they would go and shoot video and put a really professional online package together, which was really way ahead of its time at that point. Nobody did that, but it also was really expensive because you need to drive wherever the person was, shoot the video, it takes days to shoot the footage and then edit it. And anyway, so Scouting Solutions though was what catapulted, um, hey, there's actually a need for physical training and mental training for these young athletes. So we built a software for that. So we had a, like an online trainer um, way back, which again was really ahead of its time. No one had done that yet. It was something that we were marketing to high performance athletes, but the problem with that was high performance athletes don't have any money. So nobody could pay for it. Everybody liked it, but there was no money to, there was no market for it from a financial perspective to make it worthwhile. So we took what we had started there and we moved into the corporate wellness realm. I actually, before that, it was actually um, to gyms. So we had kiosks, giant kiosks, if you can remember, touch screen kiosks you might see still in a mall. And we, we put a lot of um, our resources into these kiosks and, and you could like go on there and pick an exercise and watch a video. And this is before iPhones. <laughs> so we, it was really cool technology, but again, gyms were like, no, people don't even know what to do on here. They, this is, it was ahead of its time. Um, and so we moved into corporate wellness and corp and also they didn't again the, the, as far as like having a great idea you still need a, a market who can pay for it and gyms didn't have a lot of margin because they didn't want to have to charge more for memberships because a lot of them are trying to make memberships as cheap as possible anyway that moved us into corporate wellness and then in corporate wellness um we worked with The Biggest Loser and NBC. We worked with Lifetime Fitness. We worked with Polar Heart Rate Monitors. And we um, we were one of the very first apps developed. Um, and, and we moved into like community challenges. And so it became like, we, we moved into challenges. So like you've heard of step challenges. So we do any kind of challenge you can imagine that you would do with employees or in a community. We, that's what that software that started from scouting solutions evolved into. So over the years, there was a lot, I, I won't, I say this just to encourage that, like, you never know 
what doors will open from where you start and you learn a lot along the way. Um, we still do that, but we actually now have a, a human resources software and we've, cha we've changed from really customizing those challenges which was a higher price point to making it be like an in-the-box solution that we can go after small companies. So you're just kind of constantly like, okay, this the product is good, but what, what should we do with it? And so that's kind of a, just a good real life example of the kind of work that we're trying to do. Angie, uh, I don't know if you're gonna believe this or not, but I wrote down some words before you started. I was kind of just had my notepad in front of me here and I wrote them and I, I kind of thought it was a disregard to know what anybody watching this knows. I've known Angie since she was born. So you know her quite well. So I, I wrote down these words. I said, leadership, creativity, great interpersonal skills, communicator and intelligent. And yet and yet, you kind of said at the beginning, here's some things that it takes to, to be this entrepreneur. And all of those things were, were listed there. I, I, kind of, I don't know if you mentioned intelligent, but it's there. <laughs> uh, the other one you mentioned was sense of adventure, and I, and a, you know, as I think as an entrepreneur, that that's that maybe is that sense of that risk taking because, and you mentioned that you went off to Southeast Asia for a year. You went, am I, am I correct if I remember correctly when you went on that? But you went on your own, didn't you? I went with the girl I met in my math class at university. Okay, so you, <laughs> you went off as as young twenty year olds or twenty one or whatever, and, and yeah, Southeast. Asia. I think we just turned. I just turned. 20 or 19, 20. And I would never let my kids do that now. Well, I can remember being at your mom and dad's <laughs> it, it made them nervous too, but. <laughs> we had to like pay and log on to a computer for 10 minutes to be like, I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I remember that one night, I think we were at their place the night you talked about uh, swimming in some in Thailand by yourself and saw a shark, shark in the water. That, 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 that Their hearts were, were beating a little rapidly that night. But, My mom's reply was all capitals that that email. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> but the, the the point I'm trying to make of that. So, what did you like? You take that that example of that of that trip. What did that do for you? You know, in a sense of the growth of it as a person. Oh, I highly recommend. I know COVID has really screwed everybody. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're world. Talking, yeah, we're talking. Maybe that, aside, that aside, the, you, there's. It's the similar in a lot of ways. There's no plan B. There's no one there to bail you out. You have to make decisions on the fly, problem solve constantly. Um, we had a lot of things that were, you're like, is this safe? Do we do, is this a cool opportunity or a stupid idea? Should we go swim with the sharks? Cause that would be a cool experience or will we be eaten <laughs> they were safe sharks though or i would not have done that they do not eat people but um this type of that type but um yeah the, it's like it's really all of those things it, it's very similar actually so i mean i know that a lot of high school students that watch this or their parents that watch this with them you know maybe you're not going to as an 18 year old you know go to southeast asia with a you know somebody you don't know real well or, or you've, you've just recently met but what can a high school student do to maybe kind of stretch their sense of adventure or test to see whether that's what that's that's in their realm of comfort well i guess in the most general sense would just be to try new things and and not be afraid to fail like if you're i mean this would be example for me i guess like i i did the, I did drama, I did a play in, I don't know if grade 11 or something, like just, kind of, I, I didn't, I wasn't in drama before, I, I'd never done anything like that, and I just joined one semester, and like that was something totally new for me, but um, I met a whole new group of friends that were so, it was awesome, it was a really good experience, and also completely took me out of my comfort zone, getting on stage, like, whatever that is for you but like another just kind of random thing that comes to mind is when you're old enough and with approval from your parents like even just to do a road trip for a weekend um something spontaneous that is like a fun thing but you need to make decisions budget your like budget what you're going to spend your money on spend your time on who you're going with figure out the dynamics of who you're going with and um something little like that even would be maybe a, a good little easy example yeah i guess what i'm getting at is i think sometimes 
you know, my experience as a career counselor is a lot of youth don't consider entrepreneurship. I mean, it's, you know, the idea that I have to go get a job that's a defined job that somebody hires you for. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is fine we need those in the workplace too I mean obviously we're going to have those people and that's workplace. a good place to start so I would just encourage people who want to like gain their skill set but if you have in the back of your head that you think that you'd be a good entrepreneur um like for me there's things when I was deciding what to be and it was very unclear to me I think I could, would have been a good teacher or if, I think I would have been a very bored pharmacist. I don't think that is at all for me. Um, and But business is just so, like, it can be anything. And that's really f- fun and exciting. Um, but, like, I remember when I was on the SRC in high school, and I was always involved in lots of that type of thing. But I actually quit in grade 12 because I was so sick of the red tape of being told I can't, we can't do things that we had these great ideas. And it was like, so annoying to me for Mr. Klein to say, (laughs) no, you can't do that. Um, Now I'm like, well, that's like a huge, um, it's really obvious now that like, that's a sign of someone who should, who would thrive as an entrepreneur and thrive in an out of the box management lead. Like I, I always like to be a leader, but you know, those kind of things, like maybe, maybe you might recognize some of that in you that um, you might have like that little like glimmering light in there that as you get older, well, you'll be ready. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Andy. That's, that's a good answer too, for what I, I was asking. So well, and maybe like along those lines, just one last thought is, I just want to encourage you, if you're, if you're good at what you do, and you, you know, you are, and you're an asset, don't be afraid to ask for a raise, don't be afraid, don't be entitled about it. Here's actually two things to say, (laughs) two final thoughts. There's a shift for sure in work ethic and entitlement that is um, a generational thing that we've noticed from hiring. And it's great to, to have like quality of life and to know you're not gonna sell your soul to a company or whatever. But there's also a difference between um, having good balance and not being a good worker. So I just would encourage you all to work really hard in the time that you're supposed to be working and be a good employee because you will be rewarded and it might, the coolest thing I think could be to be able to like get ownership stake in a company. If it's something that you believe in and you like who you're working with and you're, you're an integral part of the team, Um, And that doesn't happen overnight, but like, don't be afraid to ask or strive for that because that's where real opportunity comes is if you can, if you can be part of something with people that you love to work with uh, and it's something you believe in and can put your passion into, that could be something that can really pay off for you. So that might be like just something to keep in your mind as you're starting a job and finding who you like to work with and and also if it's like a small intimate company or if you want to kind of just blend in go to work nobody you know do your thing and go home that's fine too those are just two different um personalities i think for what suits you i agree the idea of make yourself valuable yes yes awesome cool anyways 